In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Greetings, God's good people. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Monday, the 1st of July, 2024. It is Monday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Amos, chapter 2, verses 6 to 10 and verses 13 to 16. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 50. The response to the psalm is, Mark this, you who are forgetful of God. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. I read from the gospel. At that time, when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is Have the right motivation for following Christ. Have the right motivation for following Christ. Dear God's good people, it is a new month and we thank God for bringing us to this seventh month, the month of July 2020. 24. For all those for whom this month is special, we accompany you with our prayers and beg God to bless you. The gospel passage we just listened to talks about following Jesus. Jesus had always invited us to follow him. He said, anyone who wants to be a follower of mine, confirm Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. In fact, the very first words that he spoke to his first followers were, Follow me. Confirm Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. And they left everything and followed him. It was the same that he said to Levi at his tax post. He told him, Follow me. And we are told Levi left everything and followed him. Luke chapter 5 verse 27. Following Jesus. To follow. It seems to be his political slogan or his logo. Follow me. If you believe in me and in my manifesto, then follow me. To follow someone is to be a disciple. To move in their steps and in their way. To like, admire, and want to be like them. Before you follow someone, you are attracted by them, their personality, their way, their behavior, their manifesto. Yes, though Jesus wants followers, however, he alone has the sole prerogative to select those who follow him. Not just anyone can follow him, even if they desire to. Jesus had said, you did not choose me. No, I chose you. John chapter 15 verse 16. 
You may have the desire, but the wrong motivation or orientation. Remember, Jesus reads the hearts. As well as, you may have the right intention, the right motivation, but perhaps you are driven by fear. You are scared because of your weaknesses, or you are just lazy to apply yourself. The Gospel passage presents these two sets of people. Those who have the wrong motivation and those who have the right intention but perhaps are distracted by different things. The first set are those who offer to follow Jesus, as we see in the person of the scribe. He said to Jesus, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. At first sight, we should expect to see Jesus excited. Here is a volunteer. He is looking for followers and yes, someone who volunteers and offers himself to be a follower. As it seems, Jesus has cast his net and he has caught a fish. But no, Jesus is not moved by this scribe's offer to follow him. He rather tells him things that, though true, yet may scare him away and discourage him. This is Jesus' response. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. As if to say, I know why you want to follow me. Remember, this man was a scribe, and often Jesus told them off for their hypocrisy. Surely, Jesus would have read his intentions and knew that they were not pure. He did not have the right motivation. You may want to follow me for many reasons, but they are wrong. Perhaps you want a good life. Perhaps you want the ambience that comes with it. Ah, to be a follower of Jesus. But let me just tell you from the start, it is not as easy as you think. This is what Jesus wanted the scribe to understand. The second group are those with a good intention, but distracted by cares of this life or frightened by their own weaknesses. Immediately, Jesus tells this one, follow me. He had excuses. Why not to follow immediately? Yes, he wants to follow, but not immediately. He wants to go and bury the dead. The first man had no excuses at all. He was ready, very poised, to follow immediately. But Jesus did not say to him, follow me. Now, this one wants to follow, but not immediately. He has other things he has to attend to. And Jesus tells him, follow me. Make the choice for me immediately. What does this passage teach us? The first, that every vocation is an initiative that comes from God. It is He who chooses and calls. No one calls himself or herself. The letter to the Hebrews chapter 5 explains that every high priest is chosen from among men. No one takes this honor upon himself. Therefore, parents should stop forcing their children and imposing on them to be this or to be that. Especially forcing them into the religious life, into the sacred priesthood. Dear parents, do not force your children. It is not you who call them. It is God who calls them. God takes the initiative and invites. Secondly, it is a call to those who journey with aspirants into the religious life, be it the priesthood or religious congregations and associations. Please take your time to discern every vocation and its motivation. Don't just be moved and excited that, ah, you have candidates. Let it be Jesus calling them and not they calling themselves. These days, we have persons who call themselves and want to impose onto the church their vocation. Those whose function it is to journey with aspirants, please take your time to discern every vocation and its motivation. Finally, even as Christians, what is your motivation for following Christ? You may have the wrong motivation, following Christ for the wrong reasons. Even those who feel called to serve God in a very committed way in the priesthood and religious life, what hinders you from following Christ? Are you scared of your weaknesses? Are you discouraged by your human limitations? 
Are you distracted by family concerns? Jesus tells us, if we have the right motivation, there is no point looking back. He who has put his hands on the plow should not look back. If you do not have the right motivation, beloved, you can also purify your intentions to have the right motivation. All Jesus is concerned about is to have followers who have the right motivation. It were better to have just three followers with the right motivation than to have a hundred of them with the wrong intentions. Let us pray, therefore, for each and every one of us that we may follow Christ for the right reasons, for the right motivation, and pray also for those who want to become priests and religious that they may not seek a shortcut to riches, a shortcut to an easy life, but that they may have the right motivation to serve God and His people and to bring them closer to Him. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy New Month.